Hello world! In today's episode, we are going to learn about group functions. In the previous section, we learned about the single row functions and how they operate. We saw that they work on only a single row at a time. Group functions are sometimes referred to as the aggregate functions because they work on multiple rows to produce a single value. For instance, if we need to get the sum or the total salary spent on every department, we shall need to add up all the salary amounts in that department. We may also need to know the average amount of salary spent in a company. To get the average, I need to add up all the salary amounts, then divide by the number of items or the number of employees who get that salary. So group functions, they work on multiple rows to produce a single value. We have a number of group functions in Oracle, and we're going to look at those we use commonly when you're working with data. For example, we have the average function, we have the count, the max, the mean, and the sum. To see this, let's begin with the sum. For instance, we need to know the total salary spent. To get that, we shall use the sum function. It is SM, SUM, and inside, it takes only a single parameter. We shall have the salary from employees. So what this function will do, to get the total salary spent on all employees so it will add up everything all the items in salary to produce a single result when you run this you can see that this is the total salary spent on all employees what the sum function did was to get all the salary amounts spent for each employee and it produced a single result so it added this salary amount for Steven, then for Nena, then for Lex, and every salary amount for each employee. That is why we say that they are group functions or they aggregate functions. They work on multiple rows to produce a single result. That is the difference between the single row functions and the group function. They will need to add up everything. They will need to work on multiple rows to have a single output in a report so that is how we get the sum we may also be interested in getting average salaries spent on employees to do that let's modify our previous query from salary from sum to AVG AVG is the function we use when we need to get the average so you can see we have the average amount then we can also get the, the maximum salary or the minimum salary. To get that, we shall use for maximum, we shall use the max function. When I run, it returns the highest salary. Then we may also get, we may need the lowest, that is when we use the mean rather than the max. We shall use the mean. So the mean will return the lowest salary, and you can see that it is 2,100. That is the minimum salary or the lowest salary. Then we can also count how many items, how many employees do we have. To get that, we can use the count function. The count. And this time you need to know how many employees do we have in the organization so we can just count everything in the employees table every employee since this table keeps the records of employees it will just produce how many records of employees do we have in this table so when you run you can see that there are 107 and indeed if we are to check this using this we can try to check for how many employees do we have and when we check we can see that there are 107 rows and indeed those are the number of employees we have in this company you may be asking that Mutebi is this the only thing we can do with the group functions group functions can do a lot for instance we may need to know how much money do we spend 
on each department to know how many employees are in each department rather than coming up with a single figure for all employees. We may need to know what is the average salary spent per department or what is the maximum or what is the total salary spent per department. To do that, we go to something we call grouping. We can use group functions to group data by using the group by keyword. When the group function columns are mixed with the non-group function columns, we include all the non-group function columns in the group by keyword. Confused, right? Let's fix this. And talking about confusion, a subscription to this channel won't be a confusion. Let's begin by finding the total salary spent on each department. To do that, we have here the we need the department ID since it is a column there. Since it's a column in the employees table, we have the department ID and then we have the total salary, which is sum and then the salary. We have just looked at this. So what this will return, it will return every total salary spent on each department every total salary spent on each department let's run and see we run into an error why are we running into an error we come back to this when the group function columns are mixed with non-group function columns we include all the non-group function columns in the group by clause let's see this. the reason why this error happened is this is a non-group function column. It means no group function has been applied to this column. But this one is a group function column, meaning this column, the salary column, is now working with a group function. So what we meant by the other statement with the previous statement, whenever a non-group function column is mixed with a group function column, in the, select, in the same select statement, we include all the non-group function columns in the group by clause. So whenever we find that we have a group function column, and at the same time a non-group function column, we have to include this non-group function column in the group by clause. If we don't, we shall always run into an error. So let's fix this. The goodbye keyword helps us with fixing this problem. At the same time, it helps us in grouping the data. So after the table name, we say group by. Now we want to group this result by department ID. Group by department ID. So whenever we find a non-group function column mixed with a group function column, the non-group function column must be included in the group by clause. So when you run this, we can see that we have the results. We can see that in department 100, this is the total salary spent. Department 30 and all other departments. This is the total salary spent per department. So you can see that the data has been grouped basing on department ID and the returning total salary per department. So you can see that we can do more with the group functions rather than reproducing a single result. We may also need to know the average salary spent per department. To do that, you can just change here and you say we need to know the average salary spent on each department. So whenever you have a good function, a non-good function column mixed with a good function column, we have to include the non-good function columns in the group by clause. So when you run this, we can see that we have the average salary the average salary per department. 
but we can also do more with this we can say we don't want the small places and how do we do away with the small places we use the round function we looked at that when we are looking at the single row functions so we can modify this so that the average salary everything the average we round it off So you can see that when you round this off, now everything has been rounded off. We can just say round and then include in the bracket what we need to round it off to. We must also be interested in knowing the minimum and maximum salary for the clerk job, departments 50 and 100. To do that, job ID, we need to know the job ID because it is the one that keeps the job positions then we also need to know the minimum salary and then the maximum salary we can add in the limiting because they are because we are interested in only the clerk job so we can add in that limiting that where the job id you can just add in like because there are a lot of job ids that start with clerk so if you remember how we use the like you can see that we are setting for n from anything then anything that Enclose the word clock regardless of what is at the start or at the end that is what we need then we have to group by remember any grouping to be done the non-group function columns whenever they are mixed with the group function columns we have to include the non-group function columns in the group by clause so group by department ID, then another one, we put a comma after the first one. This time it is not one, but there are two. We have two non-group function columns. We are going to be we are going to do this grouping based on a department ID and then at the same time the second grouping will be done based on the job ID. So when you run this you can see that we have department ID 50, 30, and 50. These are the clerk jobs in these departments. And then this is the maximum, this is the minimum salary, and this is the maximum salary for each job ID. However, the departments that we were interested in were 50 and 100 not 30 so we can do an adjustment and we change this job id per job id like clerk and at the same time the department id you can use the in function in 50 and 100 so we need this the job id the clerk job should be in departments 50 and 100 so when you run this you can see that you don't have any clerk in department 100 you only have clerks in department 50 and this is their minimum and maximum salary so that is how we can use the group functions though sometimes we may need to filter out the grouped data for example we may need to see only departments whose total salary is above 100,000 or whose average salary is above 20,000 you may suggest we use the where let us see so we say Select the department ID, then the average 
from employees. Goodbye comes after the wear close. Goodbye comes after the wear close. The moment we have a wear close, the wear close comes first and then the goodbye comes immediately after the wear close. So we can say where the average salary is greater than 100,000. When you run this, we can see that we have an error. Group function is not allowed here. We don't use the where clause when we are filtering for grouped data. This is what we meant. To filter the grouped results, we use the having keyword. Whenever we are filtering grouped data, we are going to use the having keyword. So to fix this, rather than having the where clause, we are going to substitute the where with the having keyword. So we are going to remove this from the where clause and we include this condition in the having clause. The having comes after the group by keyword. So we are going to remove this. And we have this from employees group by department ID having the average salary greater than 100,000. So we use the having whenever we are filtering for the grouped data. When you run, you can see that no department has an average salary that is above 100,000. We can reduce a bit from 100,000 to 10,000. So when you run this, you can see that only two departments are having the average salary above 110,000. We have department 90 and department 110. So whenever we are filtering the grouped data, we use the having keyword. We don't use the where clause to filter for grouped data. We may want to know those departments whose total salary is above 100,000. We're going to do the same. We can see that we need the department ID and the salary from employees who buy the department ID, then we need only those departments whose total salary is above 100,000. So when you run this, we can see that only two departments, department 50 and department 80, are the ones whose salary is above 100,000. In summary, Group functions are sometimes referred to as the aggregate function because they aggregate or they work on multiple rows to produce a single result like we have seen. We have many of them like the max, mean, count, average like we have seen them, the sum and others. We can use the group functions to group data using the group by keyword and we have said that when the group function columns are mixed with the non-group function columns, we have to include all the non-group function columns in the group by clause. And finally, we use the having keyword whenever we are filtering for the grouped data. In the next episode, we're going to learn about joins and how they work.